Uh, so, so what we do is the chain rule, we use that when we differentiate a composition of functions. And a composition of functions, it, you learn in college algebra is a way of putting two or more functions together to create a new function. Now, this definition is going to probably go straight through your head until you start seeing examples on this. But what you have is you have two functions. You have y and you have u, okay, in terms, one of that is called f of u and g of x, okay. We use u kind of as an intermediate variable. And this thing right here is representing a composition of functions. So what you have is y is equal to f of g of x. That's the same thing as f composed of g. That's what that is. You're plugging a function into a function like that, okay? All right. And so differentiable, you have to be differentiable at x. So the derivative can be expressed in two different ways. And these are the formulas I want you to know for next week's quiz. And we'll probably have enough time so that you can get enough information that you'll understand what this is doing. So the first thing goes like this, dy over dx. That's what you're used to seeing. You're doing a der derivative of y with respect to x. Well, you have kind of an intermediate function here. This g of x right here is in terms of the variable of an intermediate variable u. <laughs> so what you're doing is the derivative of y with respect to u. That's an intermediate variable. You'll understand this 10 times better once I start doing examples. And then what you do is you differentiate that function with respect to x, and you multiply the two together. So you've got two derivatives. Essentially what you're doing is you're doing the derivative of y, that's the whole entire function, the big function, with respect to u, and then the du over dx is that little inside part right there. Then you multiply it together. Now, that formula you need to know, okay? Now, here's one way you remember this. This is how I remember it. I mean, look at this. There's dy over dx right there, okay? It's not that these things cancel, but like they kind of do. That's how I remember that, okay? I got dy over dx, then I've got to have a du there and a du there. Visually, I just think of it that way, okay, in terms like that. The other variation goes like this, okay? You actually use version 2 more than you do version 1, and it just goes like this. You just take the derivative of the whole entire function. That's the whole big function, and then you multiply that by the derivative of what's inside. I kind of think of that as the, the inside function like that. Okay, so you want to get solid with those two things. Once I start doing examples, you'll start seeing this a little better. That's just kind of the definition of what the chain rule is doing. Okay, and you're going to do this like all the time in calculus from here on out. Okay, so this kind of outlines the procedure. If we're going to do the, this invariant of this where we do dy over du times du over dx, you have to identify two things. You have to identify the outer function and you got to identify the inner function. You got a big function, you got something inside. Okay, like that. Okay? So let me show you the th there're going to be three methods I'm going to use to differentiate this one. Okay? So I'm going to introduce you to the chain rule and once you get the chain rule down, you will like it. Okay? Cuz it's going to make this easier. Okay? So here's how we've learned how to do this problem so far. All we did so far is I, all we could do is just multiply it out. So we're going to multiply that out. You can write it out twice in FOIL, or you can square that out in your head with the shortcut I've taught you. So you would get that. You get 9x squared plus 24x plus 16. Square the first term, square the last term, and remember, double the product of the inner term. Okay? All right. Well, what's dy over dx? What's the derivative? 18x plus 24, right? All right, so that's your derivative. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the chain rule in two different ways. Okay, so first of all, you got to look at that outer function, and you got to look at that inner function like this, okay? So the idea is the outer function is the big thing. It's the real big thing. You are doing something to the second power. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that u. You're just doing something to the second power, okay? The inner function is what I highlighted in blue, so we're going to say that that is what u is. That's u is equal to 3x plus 4. So when you do this approach, look at the big thing and look at what's inside. This is a composition of functions. 
if you're in college algebra, tell me if this makes sense. If you had, if we said that uh, f of u was equal to 3x plus 4, and then if we said uh, g of x was equal to u to the second, if you composed those two functions, what you would be doing is you would be plugging that in there, right? Okay, a composition of functions mean you plug one function or the other. So this is a composition of two functions. It's something squared, and that something is a 3x plus 4, okay? So you have to identify that, and u is an intermediate variable, okay? Uh, they use that all the time, and I always have to be careful when I teach because they have f of u, and I always think, I better not say f u. <laughs> so I always see that in the, in the textbook. Our textbook always uses u on this then. Okay, so here's what you do. When you're doing dy over dx, the chain rule tells you to do dy over du times du over dx like that. Okay, so we're going to do those two things. So what first thing we do is we're going to do the derivative of y with respect to u. So we're doing that derivative right there. Okay, and I should have had you write this. I kind of, you really need to write this like this as y equals u to the second. So we're doing a derivative of y with respect to the variable u. Okay, you know that. What's the derivative of u squared? 2u, Two. Two good. Okay, now you're going to multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. You know that too. What's the derivative of 3x plus 4? 3. Three. So you get 6u. But that's not the answer because you've got to plug back in u. So see, the inner function, the u, is that thing, so it plugs back in like that. So what you would get is you would get 6 times 3x plus 4. That would be the derivative in a factored form like that. So you've got to look at the outer function, the inner function. Then you really just do the two derivatives and multiply them together. You do the derivative of u squared. You do the derivative of 3x plus 4. Multiply back in and then plug it back in for u. Did you guys follow that or not? Oh, I see. Wow. Okay. Well, you've got to identify. The hardest part that students have on this is identifying that. But once you practice that, you'll see the big function and what's inside of it. You've got two functions to start with. Well, if we multiplied that out, you get 18x plus 24. That's what we knew we were going to get anyway, right? Okay. So that's the, one, the first way to do, learn how to do a chain rule is like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the, the third way is what you're going to learn to do more often than not is do it this way. So uh, I'm going to write down what we have is y is equal to 3x. So let's see, we're doing 3x plus 4 to the second. Okay, now this is what you're going to get comfortable with. You need to be comfortable with the way I just showed you too for lots of different reasons though. But when you're actually doing derivatives, most of the time you're going to do it this way. Okay. So what you do is you just think in your mind like this. This is the way I think of it. It's you got a big function like this. That's the big function. So how do you differentiate something to the second power? You bring down the two and you subtract the x part. That's all we've learned so far. But then what you got to do is you got to multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which is what? What's that derivative? Three. Okay. So that's what you do. You see the big function. The big function is something squared, so you just do this. You learn to do this in your head. That comes down. You leave the 3x plus 4 alone. Don't do a thing with it. That's step one. Okay, That's the derivative of the big function. But the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of what's inside. And what's inside is the other function, which is 3x plus 4 like that. Okay, So then we would get this. 2 times 3x plus 4 times 3, the derivative of 3x plus 4 is, is 3, so what you have is 6 times 3x plus 4, and then if you multiply that out, you get 18x plus 24. That's the way you're going to do it most of the time, okay? And, you know, that's, to me, is, is it, it's not hard on this problem to do method 1. It's pretty simple, but what you're going to pretty well do from now on is if you see a function to a power, you're going to bring the power down and do that chain rule. Okay, you've got to remember to multiply that by the derivative of what's inside, though. That's the key. Okay, do you guys follow what I'm doing okay for a beginning? Sometimes students don't do so hot on the chain rule until they start practicing a little bit. Okay, Okay. so let's go do a couple more of these things and kind of get the idea. Okay, so first of all, 
I want to get you comfortable with the notational part on this. So again, what you got to do is you got to look at the big function here, and, it, and that's going to be y equals something in terms of u, and then the inside function is whatever function's kind of buried within the big function, okay, like that. Now, don't worry about the 2. The 2 is a constant. Don't worry about that. So what do you think the big function is? What's the whole big thing? Something to the 10th, right? So what we're going to say is we're going to say, and we can go ahead and put the 2 there. Let's just go ahead and do that and say that's 2u to the 10th like that. Okay? Now, what do you think the inside function is? What's buried inside of that mess? That thing. That's the inside. That's what's embedded inside. So now you say u is equal to, uh, and just the, the, the part that I highlighted, not the 2, so you're going to have like this, 3x to the 3rd minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 1. That's how you set the problem up. The big function and what's inside. Okay, everybody solid with that? Okay, all right. Now, here's what you do. When you do the chain rule, you've got to do two things. You've got to do dy over u. See, the variable is u, right? So what's the derivative in your head of 2u to the 10th? 20u to the 9th, right? That's a basic power rule. You know that. So that is 20u to the 9th like that. Okay, now you've got to do du with respect to x. Okay, that's u, the variable's x. What's that? 9x squared, 8x plus 6, right? Okay, like that. So what you do now is when you're applying the chain rule, you're multiplying these two things together. So you have dy over du times du over d, dx. You just multiply it. So you do 20u to the 9th. Now I'm going to just write it like that, okay? And then you have this, 9x squared minus 8x plus 6. The reason I'm putting, uh, leaving that u blank, because what i got to do is i got to plug back that back in into my final answer like that. You don't want your answer to have a u in it. You want it to have x's. Okay, we want it to be a function in terms of x. So what you would have here is that would just be 3x to the third minus 4x squared, plus 6x minus 1, that's your derivative. I need to write that in a parenthesis, though, like that. So that's pretty important. Okay, what do you think? There's a, cool. That is pretty cool. There's a function buried within a big function. Okay, there's two functions there. But it's going to get better because then we'll have functions inside of functions inside of functions inside of functions. Okay, and that's, that's when it gets really fun. Okay, so here's the way you're most of the time you're going to do this is like this. Uh, students usually get the hang of the second way better than they do the, the first way. And, and the nice thing is this is the way you're going to do this most of the time. So I'm just going to write this down and kind of show you what the thought process is. So see what you see on this is you've got to look at it the same, same way. You've got to look at it as I've got something to the 10th power. I don't care what that is. It doesn't make a bit of difference what that is. You're going to bring that down. That's going to be 20 times this to the 9th times the derivative of what's inside, and you'll get the same thing. You've got to remember that times the derivative of what's inside. That's your function that's inside the bigger function. So then you would have dy over dx. You'll be able to do this problem in your head. So bring down that. That's 20. Always leave whatever's in that parenthesis alone. That's to the ninth power. And then in your head, you just do the derivative of what's inside. Okay, so this would be a derivative. Man, you can do fast. So this is uh, 9x to the second minus 8x plus 6. Got the same answer. Now, the beauty of the chain rule is this, okay? If you didn't know the chain rule, you know what you'd have to do on that problem? Multiply it out 10 times, which nobody in their right mind is going to do that, right? So the chain rule is very nice. It's a shortcut. It makes things go really simple on when you have a composition of functions, okay? Okay. Okay, is there any questions about that? You're okay with leaving it like that? That's fine. Yeah, the, the only other thing you could do is you could distribute the 20 through the last parenthesis. You couldn't distribute it through the first. You could take that times that if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Okay, you're done. Okay, all right. So let's do this one. Now, this one's got a square root. So again, what we got to look at on here is we've got to look at the big outside function. 
Then we got to look at the inside function. That's the whole key is doing that. And remember, the outside function is y equals something in terms of u. The inside terms is u with respect to x. So what do you see as the big whole entire function? A square root of something, right? Exactly. So what you're going to say is you're going to say square root of u. That's what you're doing is a square root of something. Okay, what's the inside part? 10x squared plus 4x, good, like that. So see, you've got a composition of functions. All you're doing is you're doing like y, compo y composed of u. That kind of looks like it spells the word u, okay, y composed of u. So what goes there is that plugs in there. You've got a composition of functions. So what you do is you do dy over du, you do that. Then you do du with respect to x. That u is an intermediate variable is what it is. Okay, so basically we could write that as u to the one-half, like that, and then we can do that derivative. What's the derivative of u to the one-half? One-half u to the negative one-half, right? Okay, using the power rule. So that's one-half u to the negative one-half like that. Okay, that's easy. What's the derivative of u? 20x plus 4, good. Okay, so we got that. Now, what you would do here is when you put it all together, you're going to do dy, uh, dy du, and then you're going to multiply that by the derivative of what's inside, du dx, okay, like that. So that's going to give one-half something to the negative one-half. I'm not going to put u there because i got to plug back in. Then I have 20x plus 4 like that, okay? And then what u is, is u was this thing, so that goes back in there, so this would be your derivative. And I'm going to just leave it this way. The point is, I'm not doing any simplifying right now. I'm interested that you understand how the chain rule works. The only simplification you could do on that problem, really, is you could, you could factor out a 4 out of that, or you could multiply the half through that if you wanted to. That would simplify that a little bit. Let's actually just do that one step. I'd like to do that. So I'm just taking half through there. So that would be, um, I'm going to bring this down, leave that as it is. You could even factor in that uh, in that inside part, but you don't have to. I'm not going to do that. So that's going to be 10x uh, plus 2. You could do that, and then you could do some factoring. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on the simplifying. I want to just kind of get the chain rule down on a few examples here today. Okay, does that make sense? Do you guys understand the outside-inside thing? That's the key thing, okay? Now, if you're doing the second method, the way you would do this, you would think of it exactly the same way. What you have is you have something to the one-half power. The big function is something to the one-half. Yes? Sorry, I must have missed something. Um... How are you able to multiply the one half into the second parentheses and not the first? Okay, that's a great question. The first parenthesis has a power on it. Okay. So you cannot do that. Okay, you can't move under, because see, that's really under a radical. You, if you put that down in the denominator, it would really be the square root of 10x squared plus 4x. So you can't just multiply something into a radical. But now it doesn't have the one half next, so when you move it down. Well, I could, I could do this. What I'm saying is you could write this in this first. Before I did that, you could have, you could have written this like this. You could have written this like that whole thing to the one-half, right? Yeah. Okay, then you can distribute through a regular set of parentheses with no problem. You can't distribute in a radical. See, yeah. Or you can't distribute in anything that's to a power. Even if that's a second power, you couldn't do that. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, close off with this thing here. So, okay, here's what you're going to do most of the time. You see something to the one-half. So here's what you're, you're going to do. You bring down the half. You leave what's inside totally alone. You subtract the exponent. And then you multiply by the derivative of what's inside, like that. So then that would be 20x plus 4 like that. And that's the idea, okay? All right, I've got to show you my Russian doll thing. Whenever I teach chain rule, this is a great analogy. Have you guys seen Russian dolls? Okay, so this is a function. Okay, this is a function. This is your big function, right? So what do you do? You do the derivative of the big function. And then what you do is you do this. Well, what's inside? 
another function, know. right? So what do you do? You do the derivative of that function. So you do the derivative of the big function multiplied by the derivative of what's inside. I like these things. These are so cool. But see, we've only done two functions. Well, you can have a function inside of a function. I wonder how this works. Inside of a function, inside of a function. Okay? Like that. It goes on forever and ever. Okay? I like that analogy. To me, that's a good way to think of chain rule as a function's nested inside of functions. So if you had a function inside a function inside a function, then you would have like three things that you would be differentiating and multiplying together. Okay? That's not that impressive at all. I've seen some of them that have like 20 things inside of them. Yeah, okay? So that looks pretty good. Okay, so what do you guys think about the chain rule? That's not too bad. Okay, it's a nice shortcut. <laughs> so you'll think you'll be okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.